This is a lesson in calculus based university physics on RL circuits. We're just going to do some practice problems. In a previous lesson, I had introduced some fundamental concepts about RL circuits, uh, how they act at different times. And this is a summary slide that summarizes all that I had talked about in that previous lesson. Uh, more importantly, we're going to look at the acts like in here for the inductor at different times. What's that inductor acting like at different times? I also have the voltage and current in here. If you're confused at any time what the current or the voltage is doing, you can also reference this slide. The first problem I chose is actually one that has algebraic answers. Um, you could put numbers in here, but I'm just using algebraic answers. And it asks about, find an expression for the current I1, I2, and I3. So I see in this circuit I have I1 in the battery branch, I have I2 in the middle branch, and I3 on the right branch. They want an expression for I2, I1, I2, and I3 at different times. We're going to see when the switch is first closed, after the currents have reached steady state, and the, after the switch has been reopened after a long, long time. Okay. So let's just focus on each different part as we move through. And so I'm just going to do part A first. Let's look at part A first. And we're going to look at when the switch is first closed. So we're going to imagine initially the switch was open and all of the currents were zero before. Right? The battery is not able to deliver current to any of these branches if that switch is open. So when that switch gets closed, we're going to remember that the current before was zero. Right, um, And what that inductor is going to do, it is going to oppose the di dt, right? There's some sort of changing current through the circuit and the inductor is going to oppose that. So um, I'm going to go back to the summary slide. When I first close the switch and I'm charging up a, an inductor, I'm going to note that the inductor acts like a brake. Okay. So I'm going to redraw my circuit like I tell you to do. I'm going to redraw my circuit so that it's showing all of the relevant, important voltage in the circuit. So uh, let's see. I have the battery still. The battery's doing stuff. There's going to be current through R1. The inductor branch, I'm not even going to even include because it looks like a break right? It, nothing's going through here. So I'm already going to identify that I2 has to be zero, has to be zero. Okay. Um, so no branch there. Uh, we still have R2 over on this side and then that closes the whole outside loop there. Uh, R1, R2, and I'm going to notice that I1 here is the same current as I3. Do you see that? There's no I2. It's not splitting off. I1 does not split off into I2 and I3. It's just I3. So I1 equals I3. I'm going to note that. And how would I find that? Well, uh, I would easily find that. I could do a loop around here, right? Um, the voltage from the battery uh, minus I1 R1 minus I1 R2 equals zero. So I'm going to do a little bit of algebra real quick in my head here. Um, the battery voltage over both of those resistors added together because they're in series in this situation, right? And that has to equal I3 as well. Okay, so the trick here was definitely noticing that that inductor is going to keep zero current going through it. It looks like a break and so the there's just the outside current in that situation. I2 is increasing with time. It is increasing with time uh, but at this instant when the switch is first closed it's still zero. If I move to part B after currents have reached steady state value, so I'm going to note that's when time goes to infinity, okay? So if I go back up to my chart here with this summary slide, um, time goes to infinity, I'm going to note that after a long time, uh, that inductor is acting like a wire. There's no changing current going through it anymore, and it's going to act like a wire. And so it looks like this. It's just a straight line. It's just a wire. When I look at this circuit, 
uh, current leaves the battery, goes through R1, I1 goes through R1, it gets to this junction here. And at this junction here, I'm going to note that the L looks like a wire. And I still have R2 over here, but remember what current does. Current always follows the path of least resistance. Um, so if it has a choice of zero resistance or some resistance, it will always, always choose zero resistance. So in this situation, resistor 2 will get zero current. So I'm going to note that I3 will equal zero in the steady state t equals infinity situation, no current's going to go over there to R2. It's only going to go through that inductor that's offering no resistance through there. So my relevant circuit is going to be R1, a wire, and that's it, R1. I'm going to note that I1 will turn into I2, so those two have to be equal to one another. Can I calculate I1? Well, I1 is just going to be the battery divided by R1, right? That isn't too bad to do in that situation. V equals IR, there's just those two elements in there, and so their voltages have to be equal, and so um, I'm able to solve for that. So not too bad, but remember that's the trick you have to use is that the inductor acts like a wire in this situation, and then remember that current always follows the path of least resistance. The last part here, part C, asks, at the instant the switch is reopened after the currents have reached steady state. So we're going to open the switch back up, okay? Um, and so that means the battery is not attached anymore. That means the inductor is going to act like a voltage source in this situation, and it's going to create its own current. Um, because this um, battery isn't attached anymore, I'm going to note that I is I1 will equal zero. I won't have any current through that branch because the battery is not attached. I2 will be active. Um, actually, I2 is going to be the same as it was before, which is, um, remember, um, before the switch um, with switch close, Remember, we had I1 equal I2, which is E over R1. So when we open that switch, that inductor is going to do whatever it needs to do to keep the same current before. And so I2 is going to equal E over R1. This may be creepy to you because you want to use some of the values that are in that circuit. But that's the key point of an inductor is that it follows Faraday's law, it follows Lenz's law. It's going to do whatever it needs to do to oppose changes in current. It doesn't want a change in current. So what it's going to do is it's going to do whatever it needs to do to keep the same current it had when the switch was closed. When the switch was closed, the current was E over R1. After the switch is opened, right at that t equals zero after the switch is opened, it will have the same current. You don't have to use R2 to calculate. What I'm going to notice is, um, and I mentioned this uh, in the previous slide, or in the previous lesson, is that when um, the inductor is creating current, it's going to push current up in this direction. We saw that in the FET simulation picture that I had in the previous lesson. So when I look at this, I... 3 will equal negative I2, sorry, I2, so negative E over R1, okay? So I can see how this would be uh, tricky for a new student, a newbie learning this material where you forget, like you want to use R2 in there, but you have to remember that current is determined by the previous state, not by uh, the current situation, okay? So, uh, the last problem I picked out here has us do a little bit more involved calculations using that exponential equation, okay? Um, I have an RL circuit, and um, in the RL circuit shown, there's, no, there's one switch, and it just um, attaches the battery. There's no secondary branch or anything. Uh, the switch is shut, and current begins to flow. Let the battery equal 8 voltage, R equal 4.9 ohms, and L is 0 0.0021 
Henry's. How much current is flowing through this circuit at 3 times 10 to the negative fourth seconds? Okay, this is suggestive of me that we need to stick in some time into an equation. Okay, uh, we're going to have a charging inductor. It's going to have increasing current. So I of T will equal I max uh, 1 minus E to the negative T over tau. So if I wanted to find I of um, 3 times 10 to the negative 4 seconds, I could put that value in. I'd have to know these other values. So it makes me question. And I know I'm going to have to solve for I max, and I know I'm going to have to solve for this tau value, which shouldn't be too bad. Um, I max, I know after a long time, if I let T go to infinity, that would be I max, right? At T equals infinity, that inductor becomes a wire. So I would have the circuit, I uh, made that look like a capacitor, sorry, um, just this. Inductor looks like a wire. I just have the battery and the resistor. So I max will have to equal the battery voltage divided by the resistor voltage, which I can do. 8 divided by 4.9, right? Um, so whatever that value is, I'm just going to keep it rational like that. 8 over 4.9, which is fine. The other thing I need to calculate is the tau value. Tau is L divided by R. That's not too bad. 0 0.0021 divided by 4.9. So you could calculate that as well. Uh, I did and I got um, 4.2857 times 10 to the negative fourth seconds. That's the tau value. Okay, so I'm going to take those and for part A, I'm ready to go. Um, I max, 8 divided by 4.9, 1 minus E to the time, uh, 3 times 10 to the negative fourth, divided by tau, 4.2857 times 10 to the negative fourth which leaves me a dimensionist exponent. I need a negative sign on that exponent. You can run that through your calculator. Um, so I get I of 3 times 10 to the negative fourth seconds is equal to 0 0.82190 amps. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Um, part B. At what time will the current be 1.2 amps? Okay, so I'm going to say 1.2 equals 8 divided by 4.9, 1 minus e to the t divided by our tau value, and I'm going to solve for t. Okay, so this is a little bit of log algebra. You're going to have to get your log algebra out um, and use a natural log. Um, so I get uh, 1.2 times 4.9 divided by 8 equals 1 minus e to the negative t divided by tau. Uh, I'm going to subtract 1 e to the negative t divided by tau equals 1 minus 1.2 times 4.9 divided by 8. I'm going to keep working on this. Um, I'm going to take an ln on both sides. And then I'm going to get t equals negative tau ln 1 minus 1 1.2 times 4.9 divided by 8. Um, and you can plug numbers into that. We know our tau value, 4.28, so on, times 10 to the negative fourth. And when you solve that, when you run that through your calculator, I get t, t equals 5.6915 times 10 to the negative fourth seconds. Okay, so just a little bit of exponential uh, algebra there is from your college algebra days or pre-calculus. Um, I'm going to drag out here real quick. I um, did this in Desmos and I wanted to show you that uh, you could just check your answers. Uh, check your answers with Desmos. You know, if you plug this equation in and you know your values, you can just look them up on a graph and double check. Uh, when my time is um, 3 times 10 to the negative fourth, I get this, which matches. You all see that that matches there. And you can see that the current is increasing through time. There's some maximum value 
right? We decided that was 8 divided by 4.9, some maximum value after a long time. And then um, when the current is 1.2, the time is uh, 5 times, oops, 5.6915 times 10 to the negative fourth. So you can double check. I mean, you could just get your answers from that and not do the algebra, but I'm sure your teachers want to see your algebra and you get a lot of satisfaction from doing log algebra. Um, but always you can double check your answers and make sure you're on the right track. So uh, that's how you use those equations. Just a couple of examples here of how to do calculations in RL circuits. So have fun with that and good luck.